surprised as, as much as you guys preach ball security, you guys have kind of struggled that a little bit. You haven't lost a whole lot, but over the last two weeks, does that surprise you a little bit? I wouldn't say it surprised us. We know it's our identity. It's something that we focus on day in, day out. It is some, it's, it's, the sole, it's the sole purpose of our program. It's the reason why we stretch every day and we warm up with uh, holding water balls. And uh, it's just something that the growth moving forward, it's something that, you know, it happened early on in the season. It's something that we're going to put an extreme emphasis on moving on to the next week. And uh, as, it, as, as we know, you can't win. You can't win. You can't always win games. Turning the football over, so you know from here on out, we shouldn't have any more ball balls in jeopardy. Ball, you know, ball security shouldn't be an issue. Mike, just want to give you thoughts. Do you think uh, uh, the game on Saturday was another reminder that you can't overlook any opponent, regardless of how good you are? Just the uh, absolutely. I think I think every day you just got to come with that same approach, understanding that. We got we got to focus on ourselves. The only team, the only team that we feel can beat us is ourselves. So going into next, you know, going into this week, the most important, more most important uh, focus for this week is the people that are in this team room, and it's exciting to know that there's a lot of mistakes that we see on film that are correctable, and and uh, going in this next week, if we do what we have to do, we can, we can take care of business, and that, it's exciting to see that because we have guys that really care about. You don't got to worry about motivating every single player on this football team because the motivation comes from within. And uh, that, that's what's going to be exciting. You, you'll see Friday night, you get, you're going to have an exciting team. Mike, how much have game plans been affected or maybe limited by some late developing things like Kalen not being available or uh, Gump Hayes getting hurt and the fact that those are kind of versatile pieces with how you guys you, you, you employ them? I, I mean, we have, we have so much talent on this football team, more than – than I've I've ever been around. So when you do have adversity like that, guys just have to step up. And you know, a perfect example is a guy like DJ Foster. He's ready to step up at any position. If he needs to play quarterback, he could probably play quarterbacks. So it's just it really is next man up mentality, and it really hasn't been affected. I mean, at the end of the day, if we do what we have to do, we 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 align right. We you know we, we do our assignments up front at receiver, at running back, at quarterback. This offense get go will get going as as we all know. So it's um, hopefully those guys come back um, as soon as possible. But in the meantime, we're just going to do what we do and, and create an identity for our football team. Uh, Mike, last week was the first game that Mike Norvell was actually in the coach's box. Um, was, what, how different was the feel on game day due to that adjustment? I thought it was great. Obviously, um, not a huge adjustment, I know, for Coach Norvell. I think it was extremely, uh, extremely positive for him. The communication that I had between uh, him and I was great. Just being on the headset in between, in between, in between the series, so it's exciting moving forward that, you know, he's he's the eye on the sky now, being able to see everything that as a quarterback you see. Um, so it's I think it's great for our football team, great for our offense specifically, and I, I thought the communication went great. We have some amazing position coaches who communicate well, but at the end of the day, it's the leaders on our football team, myself, DJ, Nick, Kelly, who are going to get the guys going on the sidelines, not necessarily a coach. So I thought, thought we did that great. We had a little adversity late in the game, and we responded really well. You and uh, Cody Cole have been effective in the red zone. Can you just describe the chemistry you two have developed? Yeah, no, no surprise that Cody has, has gotten off to a fast start. He had an unbelievable camp. The kid is tough as nails. And he's just one of those kids that you just got to put it in a spot where if he can, he, you know, he's the only guy that can catch it, he's going to come down with that ball. And I think he showed that late in the game on that corner at the back pylon, and, and he just made an incredible catch with the guy all over him. And uh, I think moving forward, he's just going to be a guy that gets better week to week to week because he, he's, he's his own hardest critic. And, uh, you know, he, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be the first person to tell him to stay after late after practice throw balls. And that's just, his, that's just his, how he is. Mike, you mentioned how happy you are with the, the number of pieces that you have to work with offensively. Uh, it, with DJ moving to receiver, no Jalen Strong or Cam Smith, do you feel like the, you guys are still kind of settling into your identity on the offensive side of the ball? Oh, absolutely. I think, I think what's creative about our offense is that we do have guys that can move, move inside, outside, running back to receiver. Um, it, it's just it's fun. I know it's fun for Coach Norvell to put together a game plan week to week. But, we, you know, there's guys that are stepping up. Ellis Jefferson, Devin Lucien is doing great. Gary had a really good game. Obviously, Tim White is, is going to be a spectacular player for us. And um, 
I think it's just going to be fun to put these game plans together and just let let players make plays at the end of the day. Um, I think on Saturday night we, we did have some playmaking ability and there's so much room for improvement going into the weeks that our best football is yet to come. And uh, those those skill guys are, are awesome and all that, but that offensive line is really starting to bury down. We had a great practice today, some great communication, and the big players are, are, are on the way. Mike, you kind of talked about it trying to find an identity. What kind of identity are you hoping this team eventually gets to? Well, I think I think we've we've established the identity in January and especially in fall camp that we're we're a physical football team. There's no doubt what what we want to do. We want to run the football and what with what we have outside with this, you know, speed and playmaking ability, we want to be a team that that plays fast, um that plays 90 snaps a game and that's something that we're uh, we're practicing every single day to, to reach that goal. And uh, we're, we feel we're the most in-shape football team in the entire country, and that's something that we take pride in. And from those big boys who are 300 pounds to our, to our skinny guys outside and our tough running backs, our identity is that we, uh, we play fast, we run the football, and uh, you, know, you, don't, you don't gotta trick everybody. We just, we're just gonna go out and make plays. Mike, um, talking about playing fast, Todd, Todd talked quite a bit about that when he was in here and wanting to get the tempo going again. What, what, what are the key things to, um, to really getting the tempo where, where you want it to be? You know, establishing identity is something that's huge, and I think that's something that over the last two weeks we're excited about where we are moving into this third week, uh, moving on to Friday night, is that we, we are creating identity. We have, we have an incredible offensive line that, that is tough, that is physical, we got guys that can catch and run with the football, and we have an incredible running back in Demario, DJ, and obviously Kalen, who you know who hasn't been a part of the season so far. And like I said, we we want to play fast. We want to play 90 snaps a game. We don't have to trick everybody um, because when, when we get rolling, we get rolling. And, and I think we show that um, on Saturday night is that we have we have some playmaking abilities to, to to get 10 yards of carry. And that and as a quarterback and as offensive line, you love that. And uh, the big plays will happen once we start establishing that identity and get teams on their heels. Mike, you, you brought up Tim White. We kind of saw glimpses of him in the fourth quarter. Just how much more can he do with I mean, even with that, even with the cast, I guess, on? Yeah, well, since Tim, obviously, he's, he's new, so he's still fresh into the program. But since he's been here, he's caught my attention, a lot of the leadership's attention about how attentive he is to detail and how much he truly cares about this football team in the lim limited amount of time that he's been here. So when you look at Tim, you know how much he cares. Uh, he wants to win as bad as, as bad as any senior on this football team does because he understands the investment that's been into this program. And what he has to come is, is this, I mean, his, 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 his ability to catch and run with the football is, is one of a kind. And his speed and route running, and he, you know, he's going to be a serious threat for us. So cast or not, the, he's, he's tough as nails. And... When someone's invested in the program, you don't got to worry about something as small as your, you know, a, a little injury because those things go away. Mike, before you came in here, Todd was talking about an emphasis on really trying to hurry things up offensively. Mm -hmm. I, I notice you're always trying to do that on the field. What are the actual limitations? I know getting more first downs helps speed it up, but what, what, what do you see or what's the vibe you have on the field in that regard? The, the vibe on the field is pretty simple, is that is that our preparation changed a little bit, and it's, we felt it today. We had a serious emphasis on moving the ball. Um, we were we were outside today. It was nice, you know. It was a beautiful day outside, and we really got those big, you know. If you get those front five guys going, the rest of the guys will set the, you know, really the pace setters of tempo are the offensive line, and just scurrying to the ball. And at the end of the day, it's it's a tempo, but it's a controlled tempo. You don't want to run bad plays into bad looks or whatever, but. It really is a it really is a mindset. Coach Greer is, is is the best trainer that I've only been around too, but I know he's the best in the entire country. And the t it's it really is a mindset. So we've trying we're not trying to do we're not trying to play tempo. We're trying to create an identity of having tempo be who we are. And I think that says everything. I want to get your thoughts on New Mexico on Friday, and, and of course, how big is the game being that it's the conference last final conference warm up? Yeah, I think I think it's exciting. I think we have a football team now that just can't wait to get back on the football field on Friday. Um, I think from the from the little pep pep talks that we had out there at practice, guys are excited. Guys are starting to play with their eyes more. Going into the third game, the rust is off now. There's you know, we're we're ready to go, 
and uh, you really start. Guys are really watching film, like Coach said. We have a, we have a smart football team first, more than more than anything else, talented wise. So it's going to be fun to see uh, what we have in store Friday with our opponent, because we have a, you know another great opponent coming in here. But it, it's it's time to play some Sun Devil football and start. What kind of effect do you think the new double student sections and the end zones have uh, on the game on Saturday, and how do you expect it to affect you guys uh, moving forward? Uh, so going into going into my fifth year. At Sun Devil Stadium, I think you know I've pretty much seen everything. I've seen the devil walks before; they're fun. I've you know I've done uh, done the walkthroughs and stretchers, but I, I genuinely got chills when I walked out there. Come obviously, like myself and a lot of other people on this team, you have a pretty big passion for what the Inferno does because you start to get to know some of the guys in there and the girls in there, and you just see how much it means to them. And with the capability of what that has, especially in the red zone on both sides, it, it is pretty spectacular. As an offense, it makes you want to score more because you want to see them celebrate. As a defense, you can just turn around and, and you know lift your hands a little bit, and those guys are going nuts. So if we can get them engaged, and uh, it, it's going to be a fun season seeing what, what whatever they have in store for us. Thanks, Mike. Yep.